Hey everybody, welcome back to Eat the World. Um, so here I am, I'm at just at um, Kilbear Provincial Park on Georgian Bay on Lake Huron. Um, beautiful spot, so I just finished driving across the country and here I am and starting into the main part of Ontario, not far from Toronto near Perry Sound and uh, I decided to take a break for a couple of days and um, just enjoy this beautiful spot and it was absolutely stunning I had such a great time um, so yeah I just driven across the country uh, I stopped in Thunder Bay on the way and went to a beautiful farmers market but I also stayed at a place called the um, Slate River Dairy and it is an absolutely stunning place with the most beautiful dairy farm and the most beautiful dairy products I also grabbed some uh, some fresh produce which we're going to cook with, so here we go. Today we're going to be making lamb and chicken souvlaki on a spit, homemade pita bread um, with tzatziki from the dairy farm that we went to. So here we go, some fresh rosemary, some fresh thyme, some oregano, and this is going to be our marinade and kind of a, this is basically a Greek salad dressing almost. So we're just going to start with do it, putting this stuff together, all very aromatic stuff. So. Um, some paprika, some uh, lots of oregano, rosemary, thyme. Um, we're gonna have some lemon juice, red wine vinegar, lemon zest, uh, and lots of garlic. You know, we've got to have that in Greek food. I, I absolutely love Greek food. I grew up in Montreal. Half my friends were Greek, um, and they're just—it's yeah. The food is just amazing. So I'm used to having like real proper Greek food. Um, anyways, that's a really good. Um, olive oil we're putting there in there as well so we just, we just want to combine all this together um, and we're gonna marinate the meat in this um, which is very typical so it's got an acid in it which like a lot of typical kind of marinades don't but this one does like it, this, this this one does when you're making soup black it helps tenderize the meat and it'll kind of cook it chemically just a little bit you know what I mean but um, but it's actually a good thing in this case uh, yep a bit of pepper there too so we're gonna give it all a good mix and then we're gonna keep some aside for later so um, the meat's going to marinate in this, but we're going to use some of this dressing or marinade uh, a bit later on um, for a few other things too. So get yourself a little cup or a little jar and put some aside. Um, so, uh, that's super important to have that, or you just have to make some more later on, but this is a good place to start. So I got some local lamb, which is fantastic. So because this is going on a spit, we're using the rotisserie, which I've used before, and I'll, I'll post the link for that, which is just the best little portable um, rotisserie. It's fantastic. Like it's, it's. It, I had I take it in the motorhome, and it's super light and super easy to put together, and you know it, it does a fantastic job. So you want to cut it into not too small chunks, but big enough that it won't cook super quickly and dry out. But you know you'll have it. You'll give it. Um, you, it'll have a bit of substance to it that you can carve it off. So I'm doing lamb and chicken, as I said. Both local from the local farmers market I went to in Thunder Bay. Um, and then, so you, you can see there, just dipping it and coating all the sides of it, so we're getting a good flavor and penetration of everything um, on both sides. And, and do that with the rest of um, the lamb and the chicken as well. And keep them separate in the bowl so you can put them together a bit better. Um, now, why stop there, I say? Um, you may as well just put some onion in it too. So. Um, we're going to chuck the onion in the marinade too, but we're going to cut it in chunks because we're going to skewer that through. Um, we'll put it. We're going to put it on the skewer as well, and it's also going to help flavor the meat while it's marinating. So we're going to sort of cut it into cut it into like a quarters or eighths like that, or sixth, and then and then uh, separate them. So you want them to be big enough that they won't fall off the skewer, but you can skewer them if that makes sense. Um, and then we're going to layer them onto the onto the ro rotisserie skewer. So wrap it up, chuck it in there. Here we go, Slate River Dairy. I got some amazing butter. I got some non-pasteurized, no, not monster, non-homogenized milk. So you got the cream floating the top and the best Greek yogurt I've ever had. I'm not talking crap. Like honestly, that is the most beautiful stuff. So here we go. We're gonna start making the pita bread. We're gonna put this on and we're gonna let it rise. So we've got this beautiful, beautiful full fat milk. Um, give it a rip. You can see the cream on the top there. It's amazing. This milk is just like, you know, when you've had real milk from a farm, it makes you realize how crap the process the stuff is you get in the grocery store for the most part. 
Right, I warmed that milk, so you want it to be quite warm when it's going in there. A little bit of olive oil, you're going to probably get a pinch of salt and some sugar. Um, and then I've got the measurements in the recipe. Uh, oh yeah, so I've, I've that warm milk and I've put in some yeast straight into the bowl just to get that started. And we'll give it, a, I'll flick it on for a second just to give it a bit of a, just give it a quick mix and help that yeast uh, kind of mix up a bit in there. Then we'll just let that dissolve in there for a few minutes and um, yeah. Then we'll start adding the flour. Again, measurements will be in the recipe, but this is something you can do by eye. And now, if, you've, if you're good at it, um, then you'll be able to do it from feel. But I'll show you how it's supposed to look when it's done. Um, but I'll give you some rough estimates. Some, like, all flowers are different, which is kind of the problem. Like, I can't give you exact measurements. Humidity plays a big uh, role in it as well. Um, but you can see here, kind of where we're at now. You see this day, we're just kind of incorporated now. Probably just gonna take it a little bit further than that. Um, but yeah, you wanna have it a good mix. You wanna have like a, not too firm a dough, but not too soft either. You see that? It's it's a little bit, it's a, it's a little bit not, it's a bit lumpy still, and it's not really combined. You see how it's torn like that? You want it to be able to stretch. So we haven't worked the gluten quite enough yet. So we're gonna put this back on to knead and, um, and let it work. So it should become a nice, smooth texture nice and stretchy because we're going to roll it quite thin um, and then we're going to let it rise. Um, now once this has already risen but once it's risen once and doubled in sized, size we're going to sort of pull it up from the bottom give it a stretch and fold it in. Pull it up, stretch it in, pull it up, stretch it in and then we're going to let this go for another second rising. This is going to help develop flavors, it's going to help develop the texture, the yeast, all of it. The, the best thing, one thing I've learned about yeast doughs is the more time you give it, the better it's going to be. Like the, it's all going to be, you know, the bubbles of CO2 are going to be dissolved into the dough a little bit better. The flavor will be developed. So if you can give it time, give it time. Hey, but if you haven't got time, give it one rise, and then off we go. You can bang, you can start working on it. But this kind of recipe, I think you got time. Okay, tzatziki, right? So cucumber, garlic, lemon, mint. Um, so we've got that cucumber there, we're going to grate it up. I kind of like having the, you can grate it finer if you want, but I kind of like having those chunks of that cucumber in it. So, grate it up, put it in there, now we're going to put some sea salt through it. Don't ask me why I'm using a cocktail spoon, but I am, it was there, I just made cocktails, and that's what I did, so don't judge me. Um, so we'll get our garlic ready, cut that up nice and fine, uh, or chunky if you want to, if you want big chunks of garlic in it, but like a, cut up nice and fine, or medium fine, would be is, is, is good enough. Um, so that's so we, we put our cucumbers on. We're gonna draw some moisture out of it with the salt. Would, if you've got it in the strainer, um, and you'll see how much li liquid we get out of that later on. I've got some mint here, nice chiffonade of mint, beautiful stuff. So you can put some parsley in it too if you like. All that stuff's perfect. Um, and of course, we're gonna have some lemon juice as well because yeah, I mean it's tzatziki. You need to have a bit of lemon juice in there for a bit of acidity. But look at that Greek yogurt. Look how thick and rich and lovely that is. That's how it came from the, the farm. That is the nicest stuff. You know you can get a lot of Greek yogurts where they've got like, you can tell they've got a thickening agent in them. They've got, they're almost kind of, I don't know, like it's almost like a, it's got like, a, not flowery, but it, you can tell they've had like a, a like either a, a, like a gel, like a, or something like that that's thickened them. And it's just not the same. That's proper reduced and thickened. So anyway, combine all those things together. Chuck them in a bowl, and we're gonna pop those in for later. But look, look at that! Look how thick and beautiful that is. It's amazing. This is this stuff is really. It's almost like spreading cheese, to be honest with you. It's it's wonderful. Next, a little fire because I'm gonna be cooking my kutter breads over the fire. Um, just for that extra little touch, get my little fire going, and now we're gonna load up the skewer. So, lamb. Um, we're just going to alternate basically uh, the lamb, make sure we've, we've got it on the end of that skewer there. So we've got some lamb and onions, and we'll just go bit by bit and start loading up this, uh, this skewer of deliciousness here. You see I've got the lamb, we've got the onions, and just, just keep layering them. I mean, obviously you could use pork too if you want. You could pretty much use any meat you, you'd, you'd like. I mean, um, like pork is quite traditional too. I don't think I'd do fish on a, <laughs> on a rotisserie though. Um, but you get the idea. Like just layer that up. And um, I don't know if you've seen it before in my videos, but this is the rotisserie. And the actual motor that rotates this is in that black handle that's sitting on the right there. That's the whole motor. It's um, It takes, uh, I think it's one double D battery. And 
one battery has lasted me a whole season and it's 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 fantastic and uh, it works in two directions so it'll turn whichever way you want it to turn depending on how your skewer is weighted up you might want it to turn in another direction or whatever you get the idea um, but you can just yeah just keep loading that up um, so yeah lamb chicken pork those are those are the typical ones but you can put more vegetables on there if you wanted to if you wanted to make it more vegan um, omit the milk in the pita bread um, and use your own yogurt substitute that you like you can use a soy based one um, but yeah you can use do vegetables you can put peppers on there if you wanted to cook them as a rotisserie imagine if you thinly sli slice carrots that would be pretty cool too they'd caramelize really nicely on the outside um, zucchini obviously so yeah you could do a whole pile of different stuff but look this is Greek cooking um, which is pretty like a lot of European cooking is very meat based and like this is traditional stuff and this is what I love about Montreal is the, the Greek food is just amazing um, I think Montreal and Melbourne which are my two favorite cities they've got the highest population of Greek expats or Greek people um, outside of Greece they're like the food, they're like my food mecca cities, they're, um, they're fantastic, both of them. Right, so here you go, put it on the other end, then we put on our charcoal barbecue. Look at them, that's the rotisserie, and it's gonna sit there slowly and cook over that charcoal. I'll use like a hardwood charcoal, and it's just gonna rotate away and become super lovely and delicious. Um, and the beautiful thing about this design is, like I've said before, is it, um, the whole the whole barbecue once like you can use it like a hibachi like a like a barbecue um but if you want to turn it into the the, the rotisserie the whole thing tilts tilt sideways so you can see that the heat is coming from the side and then you just keep topping up that heat by putting more charcoal down the side of it and it'll just light it and keep lighting the next bits and pieces as you go but yeah that's the beautiful bit you don't get flare-ups it's a fantastic bit of equipment and again i'll put the link on there um, so I've got some sheets of parchment paper, we're going to get back onto the pita bread now. Um, some sheets of parchment paper, just to layer, we're going to roll out the pita breads. Um, here we go, there's our big lump of dough that we're, we've got all ready now, and you can see the texture of that, it's nice and soft, it's uniform, it's been risen, um, and just cut it into chunks, you know, like I guess, a, like, probably about, um, probably about a hundred, hundred grams, hundred grams or so. Um, Obviously, I'm at a campsite, I'm cooking outside, I'm doing it by eye, and that's the beautiful thing about Greek food. It's not pretentious, it's just amazing food, and it's just love to me. Like, it's just, it's, it's, you, you put your heart and soul into it, and um, there's nothing pretentious or wanky about it at all. Okay, so we got them, we rolled them, shaped them into balls, um, and now we're going to, we're going to roll them out. I, for some reason, don't have a rolling pin, I'm a chef, but... For some reason, I don't have a rolling pin, but maybe I have too many vodka bottles laying around. I don't know. That could be an issue, um, or uh, I don't know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So, anyways, just roll it out into a, a thin, round circle. You'll see. Yeah, you want to get it as not as thin as you possibly can. But you want to get it thin. Um, you can see I'm not using flour. I don't really want these to be floury. I want these to be kind of, you know, just like like you like you see pita like pita breads. They're kind of like Greek pita breads are more, they've got like a brushed with oil instead of like a coating of flour. So they're gonna go on those sheets of parchment paper. I probably cut them a bit too small, as you can see there. Um, but what I didn't do, which what you should do, is just give the parchment paper just a, a little bit of a brushing with oil or spray them if you've got a spray can of oil. Just give them a spray, it'll stop them from sticking. I had a bit of a miserable time trying to get it off the parchment paper later on. Ah, <laughs> souvlaki update. Um, and look at this beauty. That's what we were saving that extra dressing for. Or that, that's part of the dressing that was in the bowl once we um, uh, took the meat out. So we're just basting it with that, with that uh, garlic, olive oil, lemon juice, red wine vinegar, just to keep that, those, um, those flavors refreshed and topped up in there and let it reabsorb. Amazing stuff. So here's my campfire. I've put a hot flat griddle on it. Uh, nice and hot, but not too hot. And then just you know, oil it, and then and then slap your, your pita bread on it. Um, and that's it, just let it cook. I've, I've sped this up a bit, but you're probably looking at about, depending how hot it is, five or so minutes on each side, and you'll start to see, and you'll be seeing it, see that that's a bit sped up, you see how it's bubbling up a bit, and it's starting to separate a bit, and trying to create those layers of texture? 
that's exactly what you want. Flip it, there you go. That's already mostly cooked. You're just gonna cook the other side very lightly because um, it's already pretty much there. So you've got the steams cooking it from the inside and we're gonna brown it lightly on the other side and um, that's it. Look at that beautiful pita bread. Um, you know, you can from here brush it with some olive oil if you want, but I won't. I'll just put it on a plate, cover it with a towel and keep it, keep it warm. So you, we kind of, for what we're going to do, because we're going to be wrapping our souvlaki up, we, we want it to be a bit softer. So put it on a plate, cover it with a towel. Um, it'll, it'll, it'll soften up a little bit and it won't be so crispy and it'll be easier to roll. But like, how beautiful is this? Um, cooking over some hot coals, campfire, the location I was in, you know, I was pretty, I was pretty spoiled. And I have to say, the other people that were, anybody that walked by me, they were kind of like, well, what's he doing? Well, that looks good. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of flattering when people do that. But um, but yeah, a few people just commented how nice everything smelled and looked. And look, look at the souvlaki. We're just about done now. And you can see the the some of the onions are like nicely charred, caramelized. Like they're not going to be bitter. Those are going to be probably pretty sweet they're not overly done it's hard to tell on this, this on the on the camera that makes it look a bit darker than it actually is um, but those are those are beautiful those are tasty things you want to have in, in your mouth here we go I cut up some tomatoes I cut up some a little bit of onion I think uh, you've got I put some hot peppers there we've got the tzatziki in the background um, but look at that look at that amazing souvlaki so what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep it on the skewer took off the end of it, pushed it all down to one end, and we're just gonna carve it up into bite-sized bits like you would any kind of kebab. So just um, check that out. Look at that. Look at that beautiful stuff that's coming off that. Um, so yeah, that lamb is at the top. We've got the chicken thigh down the bottom, and you can carve up a little bit or a lot if you want. Now, here's the dressing. We're gonna put some more on now. To let, while it's still hot, we're gonna let it reabsorb. That's something you won't <laughs> really get in a kebab shop. That's just fresh off the skewer. We're going to put a little bit more dressing into that, a little bit over the tomatoes, um, and just let let all those beautiful juices combine and marry together. You know, that, that olive oil I've got in there is just spectacular too. So um, there you go. Okay, pita bread time. We're about to eat. Got our pita bread, a nice little dollop. Give it a smear uh, of some of that amazing... Tatsiki uh, with the yogurt from Slate River uh, Dairy. Uh, I like having a bit of mix of meat, so I'm putting some lamb in there, I'm gonna put some chicken in there, but like, honestly, I'm coming back for seconds because these, this, this food is unbelievable. Some tomatoes, you can put some feta cheese in there if you want, you can put whatever you like in there, but I just like keeping these kind of flavors simple because all of them are so beautiful on their own, like, I, d I, got I don't like complicating things too much because you've got like that pita bread cooked over the fire. You've got these. Am I love these peppers too. If you've never had them, they're a bit spicy, but they're salty and, and a little bit spicy and pickled. They're amazing. I love them in this kind of food. So you got that roasted meat over the fire, the bread over the fire, some really fresh tomatoes that I got over from the um, uh, from the farmers market too. That tatsiki is out of this world. I promise you because it's. Like I said, that yogurt is just the most incredible. So, I got another piece of parchment paper, because this kind of food is sloppy, and uh, you gotta wrap it up. So, I don't think I'd, I got a good video of wrapping it up, because I think I'd had a margarita or two at this point, but yeah. Fold it in half, or try to roll it up if you can. Roll it up again in the paper, and then tie it off, or sort of twist it off at the bottom so it doesn't leak. And there you have it. That is an amazing souvlaki. Look at that happy guy. Who's he? Oh, and then he edited it because he made a mess of himself and didn't want to see how gross he is in camera. There he is. Happy man. Thank you so much for watching. You guys need to make this. Bye.